Welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya of JSA. Joining me here at ITW 2017 in Chicago, my friend, Mr. Simon Lee. He is the managing director of Sapiens Capital. And I have to say, it is always a pleasure to have you here on JSA TV, Simon. Likewise, Jamie. Always good to see you. What I love about Simon is that he really has uh, an industry perspective from the ground up. His, uh, his wonderful work in the data center space all the way up to um, the, the network infrastructure level um, on up through the applications. So let's start at the, the bottom here, the data center level. Um, what do you see trends impacting? Uh, well, density is finally happening. I mean, we've been talking about uh, the mythical sort of like HPC and uh, dense applications coming to the data center, and a number of people have been anticipating it for a long time, but it hasn't really happen when you check the data. However, what's interesting now is that I think people are finally starting from a hardware standpoint and application level um, running enough um, parallelism that density is occurring. So we're seeing things in life sciences, we're seeing things in gaming, in AI and machine learning where uh, essentially crunching, you know, trying to reduce the dollar per cycle down to a level where you can do more and more uh, processing. So the result of that is that people are starting to take that, um, you know, into the box and, and, and into the data center. So uh, it's what's amazing is that it's no longer strange to see a 15, 20 kilowatt per rack deployment, um, even up to 50, 52 uh, is starting to happen. And I know there are folks that have always prognosticated that you'd see 100 kilowatts. We're not quite there yet. Perhaps there are some. But um, from a commercial deployment standpoint, uh, it is starting to happen. So there are some facilities like Centaris that are built for high density. And I'm sure over time, additional um, providers are, are going to continue to do so because the customers are finally starting to demand it. 50 kilowatts, that's just insane, blowing the mind. And, uh, and you know, you can see 100 coming uh, quite soon uh, due to all of the, uh, the new technologies and applications, which we'll get to in a minute, driving that. Um, but let's let's first move up one more level, mm -hmm. the network infrastructure level. What do you see happening there? Um, we've talked a bit about software defined, and I think that there's no question that uh, from an architecture level, that's starting to take root. Even at ITW, there have been some announcements about um, SD WAN partnerships. Um, there's been a Cisco acquisition recently of Aptela, uh, so you can you can see that the maturity is starting to occur. And even beyond the maturity, there are other companies that are taking it to an additional level, um, like a Netralix, which applies uh, an artificial intelligence framework um, around an SD architecture. And so there's, there's more and more learning about everything. And there's more and more flexibility and fluidity. Because the reality is, is that um, even today, as you see uh, networks putting more and more glass into the ground, um, they're, they're doing so. But um, that's a 10-year investment horizon. The question is, how do you flexibly, uh, cost-effectively deliver scalable services over that? And that requires an SD framework. SD-WAN, SDN, uh, those are the, the themes for sure here at ITW and, uh, and just in our, in our community in general. Um, so moving up to, um, to the end user, the application level, what's driving all this? Um, that's uh, it's just more compute power. You know, this, uh, we, we've been talking about big data for a long time. And while I think it's still important, the phrase of that uh, is probably used a little bit less because we've shifted to AI and machine learning. And to a certain extent, it's kind of a, an evolution of the same uh, issue, which is we have all this data, what are we going to do with it? And you can't have a person right, sit there and look at all of it and try and seek out patterns. You need machines to do it. And so whether it's in finance, whether it's in life sciences, genomics research, um, some of the other things that, you know, we've talked about is applying uh, a, a machine learning framework to smart cities. You know, how do you control and learn about your environment? How do you develop a situational awareness about things that are happening around you by um, deploying more sensors and being able to read and interpret data so that it's actionable and improves people's lives? Lives. Those are the types of things that are starting to take over, which uh, lends itself to you know a different computational problem, which is why we're seeing um, you know demand for uh, infrastructure for bandwidth for compute all escalate. Yeah, so much data. How do we make it useful? 
certainly a, a great question for for the year ahead uh, and and beyond. Uh, what do you what do you see yourself doing in the next year? Um, well, you know, infrastructure has always been a big part of what I do, and uh, that'll that'll certainly continue. But there's a, a renewed focus on the the types of applications that that are that are demanding this type of infrastructure. So uh, you, we hear about AI and, and machine learning a lot, and certainly all the big companies are are well tuned to that. But there are um, there, there are new things happening where we are learning so much about um, our environment that I do believe there are going to be uh, quite a number of, uh, of fresh new companies that are going to blossom um, that are going to change the way we think about the world. So yeah. that's, that's some of the stuff that excites me. I really do feel like we are standing at the edge of something transformative for the human race. Um, and Simon, talking to you is, uh, is always enlightening. I really appreciate your time and feedback and insight. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV. Happy networking.